the RF and Microwave Update Series. I'm Pat Hindle, and I'm here with my co-host, Gary LaRude. In this episode, we're going to take a look at our September automotive and connected vehicle-themed issue. We have dual cover feature articles. One covers multi-mode, multi-mission software-defined millimeter wave radar, and this can be used in vehicles for safety or autonomy, and also on UAVs. And the second article is 3D Waveguide Metalized Plastic Antennas, and these could revolutionize the automotive radar industry by improving performance and reducing costs, and they mount right onto the PCB, so a great form factor to work with. Gary, what do we have for other technical articles? Well, we've heard a lot about Open RAN and a lot about Massive MIMO, and AMD has written an article that combines the two, discussing Open RAN radio unit architectures for Massive MIMO, and they include results from a demonstration radio unit for the N77 band that uses an AMD chipset with a GAN PA. Then St. Gobain has an interesting article describing an invisibility cloak for millimeter wave radio units. They have developed specialized materials that hide the radio visually, yet it's virtually transparent to RF. And an article from CI Microelectronica describes a power booster for extending the range of point-to-point -point radio links for 5G. They have a system that increases the power greater than 10 dB that enables 10 gigabit per second data rates in a 2 gigahertz channel at E-band. So how about the products in the issue, Pat? So we had two tech briefs. The first was a design library that facilitates millimeter wave system development using commercial off-the-shelf parts from Aravant. And the second was a high-performance, cost-effective RF test cable from Swift Bridge Technologies. So what other features did we have in the issue, Gary? So this month's Fabs and Labs, you actually wrote a profile of Case's Additive Manufacturing Lab in Exeter, New Hampshire, which is a result of their strategic collaboration with Swiss to 12. And we have two executive interviews with uh, two companies, Signal Hound's new CEO, Harrison Osborne, and President Tom Lane, and then Jim Neville, president of Prose Technologies North America. And I didn't realize this until I talked to Jim, but Prose is the spin-off of Rosenberger's antenna products, which occurred at the start of the year. Somehow I missed that. So speaking of automotive radar in the issue, uh, in the news, Renaissance Electronics announced that they have entered into an agreement to acquire Steradian Semiconductors, and they're a fabulous company doing 4D imaging radar solutions. We've been talking to them before, and they seem to have some of the longest range 4D imaging radars in the market. So it'll be interesting to see how this fits into the Renaissance family of products. And then NYU Wireless announced that they got funding from the National Science Foundation for a new terahertz measurement facility. This is a $3 million award from the NSF, they're in the MRI program, and it'll help NYU and its collaborators pioneer basic measurements for devices, circuits, materials, and the radio propagation channels at these higher frequencies. The team includes the University of Colorado at Boulder, which will develop new calibration methods for characterizing RFICs at terahertz frequencies. And then there's the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, which will focus on millimeter wave antenna beam forming and power efficient modem designs. And then we also have Florida International University, which will explore rural wireless channels as well as factory communications at these higher frequencies. And finally, Ericsson Ecosystem Partners demonstrated support for network infrastructure for multiple slices on a single device running Android 13. And this supports both enterprise and consumer applications on a single device. This is the first time that a slice for a carrier branded services will enable communication service providers to provide extra flexibility for customized offerings and capabilities. So network slicing has long been kind of seen as vital to capturing the value of 5G for CSPs and enterprises. So demonstrating this on a single device that can make multiple slices proves that Google and Ericsson have shown that this is a viable uh, capability for 5G. So a good outlook for the future. Gary, what did yeah. you see in the news? A couple items from me. DARPA is seeking proposals for phase zero of the next generation microelectronics manufacturing program which they call NGMM, and it will establish a U.S. facility for R&D and manufacturing microsystems using 3D heterogeneous integration. The first phase, phase zero, 
will actually define what heterogeneous microsystems are, and it will outline the equipment, the process, the facility requirements to be developed by the other phases of the program. Then my second item, the FCC's 2.5 gigahertz spectrum auction of some 8,000 licenses across the U.S. concluded after 73 rounds, raising $428 million. Not a lot of money compared to previous 5G auctions. But because T-Mobile already has most of that spectrum across the country, they're expected to win most of these remaining licenses, and I suspect they wanted to keep the bidding low. So uh, turning to events, as we've been saying, European Microwave Week is taking place September 25th through the 30th in Milan. So in addition to the three conferences there, there'll be the forums that I talked about, Defense and Security, Automotive Radar, and the transition from 5G to 6G. And I just want to note that we'll be helping out with the Defense and Space and Security Forum, which is on Wednesday. And you can drop by for the Lunch and Learn session, which starts at 1 o'clock. And it's sponsored by Rodian Schwartz, and there'll be free lunch boxes for those who register. So, Gary, what about events for you? Well, registration is open for EDICon Online, which will be every Wednesday in October, and it's free. We have 45 presentations spread over the four weeks, and uh, you can peruse the topics and register for the ones that interest you at EDIConOnline.com. So we hope you'll join us for that event, a very successful event. And that wraps up another episode of Frequency Matters. Today's sponsor is RFMW, a technical distributor focused on RF, microwave, and millimeter wave products. And they represent the leading companies in the industry from antenna to baseband. So start your next design project at RFMW.com. We'll be back in a couple weeks on the next episode of Frequency Matters. In the meantime, stop by microwavejournal.com to keep up with the latest industry news, peruse our technical articles, and listen to our podcasts. Take care.